Hi there, friend. I'm Petula, your host here at All Things Agile, and today we are coming back with another Agile principle, Agile principle number 10, the one that talks about simplicity. And a lot of people seem to take offense or misunderstand this one because it says simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. So if you want to get some more understanding of it, let's get started with this video. The reason why most people get a little bit unsettled by it is this part of amount of work not done. And people were like, what does it mean? Are we like lazy, not done? What could that possibly look like? I mean, we should be productive. So productivity is very misunderstood. And then people think that that means that you're doing nothing and then you're lazy. It's definitely one of the, the biggest misunderstanding I've seen because of how the principle is worded. However, I will invite you to consider through this video that we're going to look into this principle from the perspective that you can have simplicity of product, simplicity of code or whatever you use to produce your product and simplicity of processes. What this principle basically brings to the table, no matter where you look at, is that you stop and think before you add bells and whistles into anything. It's easy to think, can I put something else in here? Well, what if you would think about either processes or products or whatever, and you would think actually the other way around. What is it that I can remove and things still remain in integrity, useful and with quality? So that's really the challenge that is brought to us by the Agile principle number 10. Complex is messy, complex is long, complexity is basically what makes you be coding for four to six weeks and still have nothing to show for. Simple, on the other hand, is undoing ambiguity as we go. And simple is different than crappy. Simple implies that there is a lot of quality. So you don't remove quality just because you remove stuff. So those are the first considerations that you would be wanting to awaken people when they are tempted to dismiss the Agile Principle 10 about simplicity. Because the simpler something is, the easier for you to ask and answer, is it done? Does it have enough quality? Does it have enough beauty? Does it have enough attribute? And last but not least, if you really think about it, uh, the, the simplicity part of things, it's really a precursor for the Agile principle number two, which is the one that talks about change. So if you have simplicity, you are making things easy to change, easy to embrace and adapt change and variability. And that's really the power here of thinking from the perspective of what can I remove? Is it simple uh, enough? Can I make it any simpler? So let's talk about simple product. The first iteration of any product can and should be simple because you still don't know if people like that thing, you still don't know if it's a viable product, if it's gonna sell. And one good example was Zappos when they created the, you know, one of the ugliest websites on earth when those websites were really not very cute back then, but they were extremely successful selling you the shoes that you want. So you don't do anything, you stay in the comfort of your home and you say, I want this shoe size blah, this color, they would go on a mall, buy that for you and ship that for you. So that's a very simple example of a product. The page, the web page was very simple. But also you can think about something else. Products that are really good, especially considering today, 2023, you notice that they shift towards simplicity. I think some of the examples could be phones and computers. They used to have a much bulkier, complex, rugged look and consider what they look like today. Simplicity in the world of product really has to do with avoid delivering stuff that nobody asks for. Because there is cost not only to create, but you have to consider that you have cost to maintain, especially if your product is physical or is an app. You have to carry that dead weight of all the things that you might not need so, you know, if you're not abiding by simplicity. So the idea is really that you would declutter your product 
avoid what we call the shiny object syndrome. And that is true for things like, uh, you know, books and courses and even services. There is always a point of diminishing return of just adding more stuff into whatever it is that you're creating. That point where adding more costs not only more because you're creating but it also does not bring any more value to the product so now you're losing twice because you're spending money and you're not having any extra money for all the stuff that you put in there so it's just not good business it's just not good economical return for products that are not simple in whatever they offer so the result is bloated products confused customers and the overwhelmed developers and producers of that product now let's talk about simple code. If you are in the world of agile software development, you probably heard of those acronyms such as KISS and YAGNI. And yeah, maybe you are too young to know them, but as I was a developer, those were pretty much alive and well in there. And that is because as software developers, usually we love our craft and we can get very overzealous and future proof everything, over engineer the solution. That is that was common in the 90s. That's still common today, 30 years later. So that is also why those long phases of design and analysis, they really aren't that helpful. What those mnemonics they bring us, it's really a reminder to avoid creating stuff that no one wants and looking too far in the future. Why do I have to make my database amazingly stable for a million users if I'm not even there at 100 users? So as an agile coach, what I really invite you to do with your teams is to help them see that when they are avoiding simplicity, they are also preventing shipping fast, which is another agile principle in there, in frequent deliveries, in constant feedback, that is how much simplicity in the code is helpful for everything else that you're doing, including the final result in the product. We could go on a long story here, but it's definitely a good reminder to know that when user stories were invented, the whole point was exactly that. How do we deliver small stuff that is good enough, has quality, but it's self-contained. And if I was to stop here today, this whole thing would still make sense and be able to be evolved 10 years from now if needed be. And in a world like that, as you can also imagine, constant, elegant refactoring continues happening so that you can, at any given point in time, come back into that code and not be like removing all your hair in craziness. Last but not least, I would just say code here is easy to think for software developers, but suppose you are uh, helping a marketing team or a book publishing team, then you're gonna talk about the artifacts that they produce, but the principle stays the same. Simple processes. While a lot of people like to engage in these battles of uh, agile versus lean, I'll just, tell you that actually Agile is strongly influenced by the lean thinking of the 1990s. So there's no confusion and there's no battle in there. But while you can use lean thinking to uh, consider all that part of simplicity and in lean, it's all about let's avoid waste. Not being simple is one of the wastes in lean. I would just ask you to do this. So consider something a lot more basic. Here is a process. You have three steps in it. So you have three opportunities for things to go wrong. Now you have 10 steps. See what I just did there? You're going to have 10 opportunities for things to go wrong. So that is just a very simple illustration on how less is more as far as simplicity of processes. And the thing is, when we think about processes, the best thing that we can do really is remove steps, remove stuff from it, remove all the fluff. You know, when you have those checklists and in the end you just do it because that's all we've, that's how we've always done. So you don't want to be doing things just because you've always done. You want to do like, I think it was Michelangelo who said that when he created the statue of David in marble, everybody was amazed asking, how did you do it? And he was saying it was very simple. I just removed from the marble what wasn't David. So I invited you to uh, do your Michelangelo appearance and look at your processes and think, what is it that we really don't need here? It doesn't really belong, can be done faster, simpler, in a better way. 
effective and efficient processes do have a very compelling reason for every single step that they have. And finally, just think that processes that are not simple, they just cost more. They are either longer because you have more steps to do or because it's just too difficult and people are confused. So you have a lot more hours doing something that maybe, just maybe, you could be maximizing the value of your hours if your process was leaner. If instead of doing a lot of manual things, some of those were um, automated, instead of doing a lot of steps of people who review here and there, and then we have to wait for these people to review things, we could just do some pairing, pair programming, pair analysis, whatever that is. So ultimately, this principle is asking you to be selective in the work that you take and the work that you execute. I hope that gave you some of the insights on how you can look at simplicity, but if everything else fails, you can just ask, what does simplicity mean to you? And as you ask your people, you know, your teams, the people you are coaching, I suggest you do the exercise yourself as the Agile coach as well. When you look at your industry, when you look at what your teams do, and even how you conduct yourself and the work that you do, what does simplicity look like? How do you know, recognize and execute simplicity? And then only when you feel comfortable with that, then invite the teams to discussion. A little bit of that empathy that going through the motions, going through the questions yourself will really be helpful when you are trying to then execute some of those powerful questions with the teams that you are coaching. So then when you're prepared, you feel confident, Go ahead and ask, how can your teams and even your, your department and your whole company benefit from adopting some simplicity in whatever ways there is? So that's, that's it, that's the video. That's what I wanted to share with you about the Agile principle number 10, simplicity. And I wonder if any of these elements struck a chord with you. If it did, let me know, put in the comments down below. If you like it, give it a like. If you don't, well, it goes all the same. Let me know since I make videos for you, not for me. And if you're liking what you watch here, go ahead and subscribe. And while you are in the description down below, just go and check the blog post because I, I go a little bit more in detail. So if you are a reader type of person, you're going to like what I put on the blog post. That's it. That's the video. I'm going to stop here and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.